Amen, amen, amen. MCC Baltimore. My name is Minister Tomas Holloway, and I'm here to do your invocation prayer on this morning. And the little snippet of song we heard, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. Dear gracious God, we come in all humility before you on this morning to let you know how much we love you, we appreciate you, we adore you, and we are inviting you, God, to be in this space with us on today. In the midst of everything that we've experienced this week, we want to experience you and your presence on today. We cast aside every care, every thought that is in our mind, that you be glorified on today, that you be magnified and lifted up. Whatever it is that we need on today, we know that you are able to do it. And we are seeking you on this morning, asking you and inviting you to be in the midst, be in our midst on today because you are welcome. Be in our midst on today because we love you. Be in our midst today because we want to fellowship with you on today, our gracious and loving God. We want to send up our praises, our adoration. We want to let you know how much we love and adore you. And so on this morning, we have opened our hearts and opened ourselves to experience you virtually on this morning. Uh, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor for what you are going to do in our lives on today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and Hashem. Amen, 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 MCC Baltimore. My name is Minister Tomas Holloway, and it is a pleasure to be with you on this morning. I'm your expediter, and I'm going to be reading in your hearing on today from the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the sixth 
and the seventh verse. And the word of God reads thus, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Welcome to NCC Baltimore's Worship Encounter. My name is Minister Tomas Holloway, and we are so glad that you have decided to join us this Sunday morning. I don't know what you have come to do, but I have come to magnify the Lord on today. So I'm asking everyone that is watching us to like, tag, and share this post. Please give us some holy thumbs up and holy hearts. This is your official call to worship. Amen. And at this time, we're asking everyone again to worship with us. As I already said, you can add some more holy hearts and holy thumbs up. Give us a double holy thumbs up. Amen. Let us know that you're watching. Put your name out there so we can see who you are. And I can give you a shout out because we don't want to forget anybody. And also don't forget that the people that are in your area on today, give them a fist pound. Give them a hug. Let me run on over to Facebook to see who I can give a shout out to this morning. Good morning to Pastor Venice folks that I see out there. Good morning to Miss Latanya Newsom Lewis. I know there's got to be some more people out there, so go ahead and put your name out there and say good morning to us and let us know where you are. Yes, good morning. Good morning to Minister Ludi. Good morning to Minister Lee Yudi. Mr. Lee Yudi, excuse me. <laughs> Amen. Thank you all. We want to recognize you and let you know how much we love and appreciate you. I'm going to share with you right now the MCC Baltimore vision. Amen. And I know we continue to do this and you are aware. So as we do the vision statement, when I say the words engage, equip, and empower, you will repeat them directly after me. Are, are, are we ready? Are we ready? Woohoo! Let us begin. MCC Baltimore is a resource and worship center that seeks to engage, equip, and empower God's people to make a difference in the world. Amen. That is our, our vision here at MCC Baltimore. Thank you all for speaking and celebrating that with me. Write it down. Keep it with you. Amen. So you can pronounce it over yourself. If you don't mind, we're going to transition into some announcements. And first, I want to say we thank everyone for joining us for our annual winter explosion on yesterday. We thank everyone who participated by providing their gifts and spoken word, dance and song. I have to say for myself, the most enjoyable part, I'm a little um, um, partial. I enjoyed seeing Walter P. Carter stepping. Amen. I don't know about you, but a good step got me excited. Amen. I, I tried to step a little bit, but you know, you got to have the right coordination. Amen. <laughs> But it is beautiful to see the children performing. Amen. Also, I want to remind you to please join us for the last intercessory prayer that is going to be on Facebook. That is going to be this Thursday at 7 p.m. And so these have been your weekly announcements. And I would ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Tomas. What a wonderful job expediting. Y'all give it up to y'all as minister, Minister Tomas Holloway. Give him some 
hearts and likes this morning. I am Pastor Venice. It is an honor to be before you this morning. I also want to take this time to welcome you into our virtual worship experience and encounter. God is good. Amen. All the time and all the time. God is good. I also want you guys to take a purposeful, intentional pause and give the God of your understanding, hallelujah, some praise and some glory. Amen. Tell God how good God has been to you. Allow God to uh, hear you worship her. Amen. Just at least one, you can just say, God, I thank you. And God, I love you. And God, I worship and I, I appreciate every experience every encounter of your divineness, hallelujah, into my life. If you can just do that as well, I know the Lord would be so grateful. Amen. And, and as her, her faithfulness to us is not impingement upon that, but it's important that we remember to do it. Amen. Amen. So what I've been called to do is I'm going to give the actual pastoral announcements. And I have two announcements for you all this week as you are preparing yourself literally to wrap up 2022. Can you believe it? We are at the end of the year. Amen. And so we have a couple of things that I want you to note. Uh, the first thing is that we are um, at the end of 2022 going into a watch night service. Amen. We are not having it at MCC Baltimore, but one of the things we are doing is we're joining with our sister churches, UFC Columbia and UFC Baltimore to have a watch night service on December 31st, Saturday, December 31st. First, starting at 10.30 p.m. So mark your calendars accordingly so that we can be in worship with them. It's going to be in person at 120 Allegheny Avenue, Towson, Maryland. And the rest of that information will be also accepted, um, will be able to be reached in the e-news after this week. Amen. And so we'll have we'll have that there. Um, so there will be fellowship after the service, but please come, go, I mean, go and worship with UFC Columbia and UFC Baltimore. Amen. Our ministers will also be a part of that service. And so go in, and support the ministers. And my last announcement as the pastor is I want to just do a friendly reminder that all ministries, except for Sunday Worship Encounter, will be on a hiatus until February 2023. Amen. And so please, I'm asking you all to keep MTC Baltimore ministers and myself in prayer as we prepare ourselves to continue to embark on all the service God has for us to do at MCC Baltimore, remaining steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in God's work. Amen. Amen. So again, this is Pastor Renise. These have been your pastoral announcements. God bless you. Amen, MCC Baltimore. And at this time, we're going to move into our Advent moment, if you will, with me, because today is the fourth and final Sunday of the Advent season. We're going to light the final purple candle, also known as the angel candle, which represents peace. Amen. So as you see, the fourth candle is called the angel candle because it's the second chapter of Luke. The angel announced Jesus's birth and proclaimed to the shepherds that Jesus came into the world to bring peace. And suddenly there was with the angels, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Let us always, always remember that Jesus came to bring peace to the world and to our hearts. Peace to the world and to our hearts. Please begin with us. Let us work together and continue to spread that peace into our homes, our communities, and beyond. Amen. Amen, MCC Baltimore. Now we are going to move into our offering moment. Woo! Praise the Lord. Another opportunity to worship God through our tithes and offering. 
The scripture text I have for you today is coming from the Old Testament, from the book of Leviticus, the 27th chapter, the 30th verse. I'm going to read the NIV version for you. The word of God reads as thus. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil, fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. This scripture points out that the Israelites were to tie the portion of everything from the land to God. The people needed to recognize that everything belonged to God. Everything they possessed, everything they had been given, had been given to them by God. God owns everything and freely gives it to us. Because everything belongs to God, God was teaching the Israelites obedience and faithfulness as part of their worship. They were required to consciously and physically set aside a tithe of their possessions to God. We understand worship through prayer, through praise, through music. We also worship God through our tithes. We show God respect and adoration through our tithing. Tithing consistently taught the Israelites to be obedient and faithful. It consistently reminded them that God was their provider. This repetitive action was meant to build a relationship between humanity and God. A relationship that could be viewed, you could say, as a, as a circle. Because when the Israelites gave to God, God would give to them. They would give to God. God would give to them. And it would continue to go around. It's important to remember the history of tithing. Why? Because we need to realize that God established the law and not humanity. God created the law, gave the law to us. And that fact has not changed. You, me, all of us are giving our tithe to God. It does not matter who stands before you to make the appeal. The church name doesn't matter. The denomination doesn't matter. Our obedience and faithfulness is being practiced to God. And that is what matters. We give our tithe to God to support God's house which is the church. In the Old Testament, the tithe supported the tabernacle and the Levitical priest. Today, we, we still follow the principle of tithing to God. We know that the offertory appeal when we hear it. Before we enter the church building or long on to virtual service, we've probably already made up in our mind what we plan to give. However, we need to be mindful to give back to God according to the measure of God's provision within our own lives. I ask you to pause for a minute and, and look at all that God has done for you through the years. <laughs> Do you realize and see the provision of God? the faithfulness of God, how God was with you on the good days and God was with you on the bad days. Do you see the situations that you encountered that God was yet with you and the situation could have been worse, but because God was with you, you made it out. And so on today, I'm making an offertory appeal to you. And I ask that you demonstrate your obedience and faithfulness to God on today. How are you asking us to do that, preacher? I'm glad you asked the question. I'm asking you to contribute consistently, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. Why am I presenting this appeal to you? Because you sustain the ministry through your donations. Amen. And now I ask you all to remember God's goodness and faithfulness to you on this morning as you prepare to give your tithes and offering. 
you can give multiple ways. You can give via PayPal to Metropolitan Community Church of Baltimore. You can give via Apple Pay. Look for Metropolitan Community Church of Baltimore. You can mail a check to 401 West Monument Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21201. You can give via www.mccbaltimore.org. Look for the word give at the top banter banner. You can give via text on your phone by typing the phone number 844-526-6222. Type the word give in the message. You'll receive a link that will prompt you to donate electronically. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Offertorio Appeal. And now I'll give you some time to make your donation. Enjoy this song. From heaven you came around There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of this glory To a cradle in the earth Praise the Father Praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, God of praise forever to the King of To reveal the kingdom come and to reconcile the laws, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For Amen, people of God. Amen. We are going to do prayers of the people. Will, will you pray with me and for me as we pray together as a community for one another? Dear. Gracious God in heaven, it is in the name of Jesus that we come 
before you in all humility. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. We say, hallelujah, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. You are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor from the rising of the sun and to the setting of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. We want you to know that we love you on this morning. We adore you. Ah, oh, God, hallelujah. You've done a beautiful thing. You loved us right where we are. You have poured out your love, your mercy, and your grace upon us. You have been so good to us. And so on today, we come together praying for one another, God, because you see the hurt and the despair that is out there on today, God. You see the tears that are being shed ah, by the families, by the children, by the mothers, by the brothers, by the parents, for the loss of loved ones the, through violence and through their own hands, God, on today, we're asking you to comfort those that are dealing with loss in the name of Jesus, my God. Wrap your loving arms around them and comfort them, God. We don't have the answers, but we know, God, that you can comfort us where we are today in our pain and our misunderstanding. You can lead, guide, and direct us, oh my God, to a place of healing and so on today. We need your healing touch, God, to, to heal heal the despair, to heal the discouragement. We need you to touch us on today, God. You, you know there are people out there that are discouraged and depressed during this time of year, and so we lift them up to you, oh God. Uh, lift up their bowed down head, God. Uh, put joy in their hearts in the name of Jesus. Put praise on their lips, God. Uh, encourage them, God. Send people by to encourage them and to speak life and more abundant life into them on today, God. Remember those that are out there, the, the children, God, and all that they are going through and all that they are asking for during this month, during this season. Just let them know that you love them, God. Let them know that they are thought about. Let them know that they are appreciated. Love on the children, God, in the name of Jesus. Encourage them in the school. Encourage them at home. Encourage them in the community, God. Uh, when they turn from doing that which is wrong, uh, encourage them, God, because their friends in the community may not be encouraging them to do what is right. Uh, but you, oh God, uh, you have put a song in their heart. Uh, you have given them a pathway. You have set your will upon their lives. And so we're asking you to encourage the children and encourage all the youth on today. Uh, we lift them up before you, God. Uh, they are your children, are a heritage from the Lord, and we thank you for giving them to us. So move in their lives as only you can by your spirit, God. For those that are dealing with sickness, God, you are still Jehovah Rapha. We don't understand and know all the ins and outs of what they're experiencing or the, the technical terms that the doctors have given them. But you, oh God, hallelujah, you have the last say and you are a God that can heal, God. You are a God that can heal. Touch your people. Let your spirit flow through their bodies, through their cells, through their muscles, through their tendons, through their nerves, from the crown of their heads uh, to the soles of their feet, God. Uh, provide your healing virtue, God. Uh, and even on today, God, we're asking you, continue to move in our midst. Uh, continue to move in our community, God. Uh, we need to see a move of you like never before, God. Uh, we're seeking you and we're crying out, God, uh, as you take us to higher heights and deeper depths to you. Uh, let your miracles go forth. Let your signs and wonders go forth. Let the people of the world be in awe of what the God of our salvation is doing, God. You have a way of turning every situation around. You are even working over in Kosovo, God. You're working overseas, God. Even those countries that don't recognize the LGBT community, God. You are still working by your power, God, to lift those people up from oppression because you're looking at the marginalized. You're looking at those that are just you're looking at those that are disenfranchised. You're encouraging all of us, God, as only you can. We need you on today, oh God. We're crying out to you to meet the needs of your people. Oh God, sometimes we're so good at hiding the hurt, God. 
but we want you to know on today, God, we're hurting, God. We're discouraged, God. We need you to lift us up. We need you, oh God, to show us a better way. Help us as we walk through the valley of darkness because you said we would fear no evil. We need to trust in you. We need to rely on you, God. Encourage us, oh God. You are the author and finisher of our faith, God. We know that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. So encourage your people on today, God, uh, the season that we are in, uh, the commerciality of the season, promoting by this and by that. Uh, but we need a savior on today. Uh, we need you to encourage us. We need you to deliver us. We need you, oh God, more than we need anything else. Uh, you are life sustaining. You are a very present help to your people in a time of trouble. Let your people know that you are present on today. Encourage them through the word of God. Send people around to encourage them. Whatever the need is, God, you've got it and you're able to meet it. Oh God, we trust you and we lean on you today the God of our understanding. We are not where we were yesterday, but we are in a new position on today. And we give it all over to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and ashe. Wherever you are in your home watching this program, just, just lift your hands up and just give God a wave offering and just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just let God know how much you love her, you adore her. Hey, we're not asking for anything right now. We're just worshiping God and hey, in spirit and in truth. Just love on God, hallelujah. The way God has loved on you all year long. Just let God know, speak some words of love to God. Love, God, I love you. God, I thank you for everything you've done in my life here. God, I thank you for everything you delivered me from. God, I thank you for providing for me. God, I thank you for sustaining me. God, I thank you for healing me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, the Spirit of God is here to give us what we need, what we need. Lift your hands up and worship the Lord of your understanding that you might receive all that you need on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And bless the Lord. These have been the prayers of the people of you on today. We're going to transition now into our song of preparation. And then the next voice you will hear will be a dynamic and powerful speaker, none other than our own Reverend Dr. Venice, folks. Amen. Get your paper and pencil ready to scribe down some words from God today. Angels sing out loud, 
Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. It is an honor to be before you all this morning. To God be the glory for all the good things she is doing in our lives and she continues to do in our life. Amen. Y'all continue to give God the glory this morning. Minister Tomas has done a wonderful job um, allowing God's spirit to be present in our service on a virtual level. And I am so grateful, amen, for ministers who are keenly aware of God's spirit in essence in their life. And so I want to also give this moment in time for us to, before the end of the year, amen, to consider everything God has done for us, amen, in 2022 and remind ourselves just how good God has been, hallelujah, and give God just a wave of our hands if we want to, or to sit in contemplation and thank God for the goodness she has done in our life. God, you've been good to us and we thank you for it, hallelujah. You've been so good to us, better than we could have been to ourselves. And for that, God, we are thankful. Hallelujah. And sometimes, most often, people of God, until we lift up our voice and we declare a thing as so, people won't know that we know God has been good. So be okay with telling the world and sharing it from the mountaintops that God is amazing. God is awesome. Hallelujah. God has been wonderful to me. Amen. Hallelujah. And because of that, hallelujah, I will worship the God of uh, my understanding and spirit and in truth. I will worship the God of my understanding when I am high and when I am low. I will worship God. Hallelujah. At all times. Hallelujah. God's praises will continuously be in my mouth. That is what I declare this morning. Good morning. Good morning, MCC Baltimore. It's so good to see you. Hallelujah. Virtually in the house of the Lord. I know that I'm going and I'm checking it off by way of Facebook, but I see you are with us. And so I thank you for being with us this morning. I understand there's so many other places you could have been, but you decided, you decided to be here at MCC Baltimore. So for that, I say thanks. I want to give thanks to the ministers, amen, on this morning for partnering with me, your pastor in worship and worship experiences that would not be possible without them. And I also want to give thanks to my family and my wife, Reverend Pam. Y'all give it up for your first lady, Reverend Pamela Folks, amen, for her continual prayer uh, for me uh, while I do ministry with you all. Amen. Amen. And so I'm not going to be before you long. I promise. Amen. I just have a word from the Lord um, and it will be a quick word from the Lord on today. I do want to invite you all to worship with me at 3 p.m. as I am the guest preacher at Rehoboth in Atlanta. Amen. And they do stream live from YouTube. And so if you just put in Rehoboth from Atlanta, this is Bishop um, elect Troy Sanders out of TFAM's church. I will also be preaching there this afternoon, this evening. So I encourage you to have two services this Sunday. Amen, y'all. Put a number two in the chat. The two services. Again, and we'll be streaming from YouTube on that. Not from Facebook, but from YouTube. Amen. So I know you all have your words available. So let's pull out our Bible, our biblical swords, and turn to the Matthew of Gospel, chapter 2. We're going to read 18 through 21 and then verse 24. You have your so if you read to the gospel of Matthew, chapter verses 81, amen, and then verse 24. I'm going to be reading the new revised standard, uh, new revised standard version updated edition. All right, so you all can listen as I read, but I would definitely appreciate you reading it with me, amen. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous person, righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. When Joseph awoke he, from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. 
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Creator, we thank you, oh God, for this moment in time when we get to dine together on your word. We thank you, Lord God, for the words proclaimed as I am being used in the moment as the instrument to proclaim them. Allow the words presented in the sermonic moment pierce our hearts and our minds, calling us to move and to respond and to receive everything, Lord God, that you have for us in this moment. So God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the moment and we thank you for all that you're doing for us. It's in your name and the many names of God, I pray. Amen and Ashe. And so for this sermonic moment, I will be coming from the title, Agents of Peace, from Matthew 2, 18, 21 through 24. Amen. Agents of Peace, Matthew uh, 2, 18, 20. Uh, through 21 and 24. Amen. So on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we lit the angel candle as a way to acknowledge the importance of angels in the biblical text surrounding Jesus's conception and birth. Specifically during this time, a multiplicity of angels were used by God to communicate the coming of the Holy Messiah and to proclaim to humanity the peace he will bring to the earth. And yet it's ironic to consider that the initial declaration of Mary's conception of Jesus was not a peaceful experience for everyone involved. With one incident in particular, it wasn't until God entered the situation and used an angel to advocate for Mary did God's spirit of peace and, and actually uh, did, did God's spirit of peace actually fill the space and transform not only the atmosphere but also the mind and the heart of the one in turmoil. Oh, that beloved is what God's spirit and angelic intercession does and should always do, change the atmosphere. We find in the Matthaean text, a pre-Messianic bibliographic version of a journey leading to Christmas. And at this point in the story, we find a man named Joseph contemplating a very serious decision as he has found himself in a difficult situation. This man named Joseph is engaged to a young woman named Mary found to be pregnant with a child and not from any physical touch of his own, y'all stay with me, but from a source yet revealed and explained. And he, as many of us would be, is seen struggling with finalizing not only what to do about the situation he has been unapologetically thrown into, but contemplating how to plan an exit strategy, if you will, that would not cause harm to himself or to the one who was promised to him, the one whom he loves. Now, I believe that many of us have been in Joseph's situation as pertaining to how to figure out uh, and deal with an unplanned, unprepared, or non-self-inflicted circumstance. Oh, I'm sure there is at least one listening today that has had this problem. But if not... I also believe that at our wonderful ages of experience and situational activities, y'all can use your imagination there, amen. We have found ourselves at times or another dealing with being tightly fixed between a rock and a hard place. That we also, because of our lived experiences and youthful and youth field decisions, know how it feels to be in a pickle and in a bind finding ourselves in predicaments and in dilemmas we didn't know how to get out of or couldn't figure out how to emotionally comprehend. Oh, therefore, beloved, we can find empathy this morning. Empathy with Joseph in the situation he is experiencing in this text because we have all experienced peaceless and peace-deprived moments in our lives. Come on. Now, my intent this morning is not to bash Mary in any way. As you all know that I know, Christian tradition says Mary was a virgin. And yes, I know Christian tradition also says God's spirit impregnated Mary with the Messianic Savior, Jesus, to fulfill the scripture from the prophets. But can I make it plain this morning? The truth of the matter still is not enough attention is given to Joseph during many Christmas narratives and sermons to discuss the ways in which he handled the entire messianic situation at hand. Or oh, because what can also consider and be considered is that if any one of us were Joseph, come, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. Let me not be. Listen, if I was Joseph, let me talk about myself. So, uh, if I was Joseph, I don't know if I could have. Uh, could have or would have been as righteous uh, in my actions upon finding out that Mary was pregnant by another, however that pregnancy came to be. Come on, y'all. I would have some questions for Mary. 
and probably some colorful word choices for her too. Am I talking to myself this morning? Come on, somebody, a man with a plan. A man destined to love and be in love with his beloved had been derailed at the moment by a situation that was not his fault nor his doing. Let's talk about it, all right? His whole world, his entire world had been turned upside down when the woman whom he loved, the person who he was to be married to was found to be carrying someone else's baby. I can only imagine the frustration and the heartache he felt upon finding out this truth. I can only imagine that Joseph had to be overwhelmed with confusion and disappointment and dejection by this circumstance, let alone the public, the public embarrassment and ridicule and societal ostracizing that he and Mary might experience due to this situation. We are talking about a time, y'all, in history when a woman's innocence and virginity was her purity and soon to be husband's glory. We are talking, we are talking about a time when a woman, women were stoned and killed for adultery and fornication. What is a person then to do? Oh, when faced with such a decision and situation, what would you do? When faith, when faced with such a decision, mirage as shame. The truth is, I know many Josephs, both male, female, and non-conforming. I I know many people who have been frustrated about life circumstances, who have been heartbroken, despondent, and disarrayed from various circumstances happening in their life and no fault of their own. I, people of God, you, people of God, you know many Josephs, male, female, and non-conforming, dealing with anguish and anger and confusion for loving abundantly and feeling as if they've gambled with love and lost. Oh, we know many Josephs, male, female, and non-conforming, who even this morning are looking for a way to escape the turmoil, the pain, the ridicule, and the sadness because life took from them. And sometimes it takes more than it gives back. Now, the causes of all these emotional and mental dispositions are not all the same, but the emotional and mental state, the anguish and the lament are what they are, a reflection of one's current reality. And these Josephs of the world deserve to be noticed and witnessed to just as much as Mary's fiance Joseph did and does in this story. Uh, for if he did not, God would have never sent him an agent of peace and comfort in the form of a celestial visitor to witness to him. Come on, y'all consider that. God would have never sent an angel if he did not matter. And that is where we are this morning understanding the importance of the advocate called angel, the one who through the guidance and commandment of God and commitment to God and her grace, finds Joseph in a lonely place and comforts him back to wellness. And in this, we find the blueprints on how to not replace the celestial beings because we can never do that, but instead on how to co-participate with the angelic host in diminishing peace, impoverished places in the earth. What, what we will discuss is how we as believers have been gifted the opportunity to advocate for the Josephs in the world as agents of God's peace and God's love. I first need us to understand that every Joseph, I need us to get this, that every Joseph in the world deserves to be attended to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One's vocation, destination, disposition, or location should not matter and does not disqualify them as recipients of God's endless peace and love. Every person, every person experiencing peace deprived circumstances in their life needs to know that God's peace is sufficient for them and that the same love that carried Joseph through his current circumstance is the same peace and love and assurance available for them too. After all, uh, after all, the same peace of God through Jesus Christ is available to all of us. For it's a divine peace encompassed in love that is undeniably quintessential, working to perfect our imperfections. Come on, somebody. It is a peace that the world cannot give, nor can the world take away. As the scripture states, it's a peace that passes all understanding. 
having the ability to transform and guide our hearts and minds about our circumstances in life. It is a peace given by the God of peace to each of us at all times and in every way. Every Joseph, Every Joseph deserves God's peace, love, and care. God's love is the conduit by which Joseph's concerns were even addressed in the first place. Because God loves all, especially the Josephs in the moments of Joseph experiences, she cares about the discord. She cares about the anguish and the grieving being experienced. Know that God cares for you, Joseph. And as believers, the honor we carry is that we have the opportunity to care for God's people the same way she does. We then are able to become peace practitioners, co-partnering with the God of peace, becoming earthly angelic vessels for the Josephs of the world. For when God doesn't send a celestial visitor, a heavenly host to comfort those needing peace and love, God indeed sends us. What an honor it is and a privilege, a privilege to make oneself available to be used by God for such a beautiful transformative moment in another's life. Oh, I can hear in my spirit some asking, Pastor, I, I don't know. I don't, this all sounds good, but I don't even know where to begin to work as a peace ambassador for the Lord. And if that's where you find yourself at this morning, don't, don't be afraid. Everything we need is in the scripture. The angel in the text provides for us the detailed instructions to follow. When God guides us to communicate to Joseph, it is imperative that we do two things first, that we first see them and then we engage them. Y'all put that in the chat. We have to see the Josephs and then engage the Josephs in order to share God's peace and love with them. It's in verse 20 where the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. But the only way the angel could appear before Joseph is if, it first saw Joseph. When was the last time you saw Joseph? When was the last time you saw the Josephs of the world? When was the last time you paid attention to the pain and the anguish of the Joseph? It's so easy for us to get caught up in our own life that we often forget to account for the one who is not seen contemplating life's worth and next steps. Come on, y'all. When was the last time you saw Joseph, male, female, and non-conforming, and saw their grief and disappointment and discontentment? Oh, this Advent Sunday, the ways we can fully understand God's peace is to still bear witness to places in the earth and each other's life where peace goes missing for whatever reason. I, we must take a moment, slow down and see Joseph's pain. Oh my God, today, when was the last time you saw Joseph? Are you Joseph? Are you the one experiencing a Joseph moment? I need you to know that you matter and I see you. We see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to take this off. Hallelujah. And we want to walk with you through your Joseph experience and moment and honor the emotions you are experiencing. If you reach out to us, I promise you we'll reach back out to you. Oh, you need to know that your Joseph moment is but a temporary situation in life or that you have a yet to experience. There's so much more. To experience after this, if you can just hold on through this moment. Beloved, see the Joseph in the world. Take the time to slow down and see each other. And after we see each other, or oh, as peace practitioners, we should engage one another. I don't know any medical practitioner that does not engage in a medical emergency when they see it. It's actually part of the oath they make. Act when the needs of humans. Name is peace. See peace lacking. We must act with the authority of God to bring peace to the situation by engaging those that are peace deprived. See, the angel of the Lord saw Joseph and brought peace to Joseph by engaging him. The angel simply said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. In other words, do not be afraid of your current situation. What is interesting about the text is that up to this point, fear, fear had not been mentioned as the culprit causing the decisions Joseph was making. And yet fear Y'all, fear is often the spark that leads to other emotional flames and mental explosions. Fear of failure, 
fear of unfaithfulness and infidelity, fear of self-worth, fear of not belonging, fear of lack, fear of loss, fear of not being enough, fear of not doing enough, fear of not loving or being loved enough, fear of not be being, fear of being alone, fear, fear, fear. Either way, the angel sent by God was able to be attentive enough to call to Joseph the very moment of engagement he needed at that time. So whether your issue is fear and an abundance of fear that's sparking other emotions or not, we need to be able to engage where you are. Now, listen, we are not celestial agents. I keep saying that because it's important for us to know we are not angels. Amen. In the heavenly sense. So we obviously shouldn't guess what the Josephs of the world need, but we can use our human sensitivities and compassion to be just as impactful and attentive. After we see the Josephs in the world, can we just be willing to talk to them, to sit with them and engage them? Can, can we commune with them? See, it's, it's not our job to guess the state they're in, but can we at least be willing to see them, ask about them, and hear them so we can share the same love of God as a witness to them. As peace pack practitioners, may we intentionally go to the places that are peace and secure and offer up the love of God and the peace of God through presence, consistency, time, and authenticity. The, the Joseph, y'all, the Josephs of the world, the male, the female, the non-conforming Josephs need us today. And God wants us to be willing to spread her peace and love this Advent, Advent season. And finally, beloved, as, as peace representatives, it is important that we remember this last thing. As a peace practitioner, as a peace ambassador, as a peace representative, we must remember where we start and where we stop. As ambassadors of God's peace and love, it is okay to know where you have extended yourself to the point of completion and know that Joseph needs someone else for more. Remember, the goal is to ensure that whenever the Josephs we encounter awake or wake up from their moment of despair, sadness or anger they were in. They are no longer there, but in peace. That's the goal, that they've experienced a transformative mental and emotional uh, change and are better than how we found them. And if they need more than you for that, then lead them to the more that is greater than you, for God is in the more too. And so I hear you. What, what more, Pastor? What more are you talking about? I'm glad you asked. More mental, emotional, and financial resources. More support groups, more accountability partners, and more counseling sessions. See, because God encompasses the more, and God's peace and wellness and wholeness for their lives also is in the more. So that they can continue to live and live out the purposes God has for them beyond this unforeseen, temporary situation See, Joseph was seen. Joseph was engaged. And because of being seen and engaged, his counsel uplifted. He was able to do more with his life and be whom he was called to be in the moment. Mary's husband, Jesus' daddy. And because of one unforgettable healing experience with a divine agent of peace, it all shifted the outcome. One unforgettable Healing experience with one divine agent of peace, Joseph's life changed. His decision shifted. Everything changed for the good. May we be agents of peace who see the Josephs, who engage the Josephs, bring the peace and love of God to their hearts and lead them to be more that, than that is greater. Hallelujah for them in the moment. Also, they can live and live life abundantly. After all, God desires for her children is that we all live peacefully and abundantly in the love of God and with each other. So let us work together and continue to spread that peace into our homes, our communities, and to all. Amen? Peace angels is what God is calling us to be in this Advent season. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I thank God. Hallelujah for the moment to be peace agent. 
I see you, Joseph. I see the male, the female, and the gender non-conforming, Joseph. We see you this morning. Hallelujah. And we want you to know you're not alone. That if you reach out to us, we'll reach back out. But if we don't, if they don't reach out, people of God, can we just take a minute? Hallelujah. Can we take a minute and see them and engage them? Hallelujah, where they are. My God, today, we see you. We love you. Agents of peace, people of God. Let's be angels of peace. Let us pray. Heavenly creator, we thank you, oh God, for everything that you're doing in the moment. God, we thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for calling us to be more attentive to those around us and to those who we come into contact with. And so right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, allow us to be able to sit still long enough, God, that you can show us who Oh God, are the Josephs that we need to engage in the world. Lord God, allow us, oh God, to put on the mantle of a peace ambassador in this season. Allow us to care for one another, Lord God, beyond our current situation and even the things we're dealing with so that we can see one another and engage each other in a way that's uplifting and transformative to the lived experience. God, we know we need you in the encounter. God, we know that if you don't lead us to them, we won't, we won't be able to give them what they need. So we're trusting you to guide our footsteps to the Josephs, Lord God, that we will attend our ear, hallelujah, in our hearts uh, to the needs of your people. Oh God, if we are asking you, Lord, to use us in this way, we're looking for the moment in time that we can be used in this way. And God, I pray for the Josephs this morning. The ones who are tired and who are angry. The ones who are dealing with life and ready to give up and throw in the towel. God, and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I call a mental health day right now for those who need someone and allow the angel, the earthly vessel to come to them and to tell them there is more in your possession. Or allow mental resources to flow the gates, Lord God. Allow people not to despise mental health. I rebuke mental stigmas in the name of Jesus. We need our people to survive. Oh God, we want them to live and to thrive in the earth. And God, if we can just pay attention to the Josephs, the the high functioning Josephs, God. All the ones looking, Lord God, shut up for a way out, but don't know any other way. And they're taking their life, oh God. Oh God, we need to be more attentive. May we seek them and engage them, Lord God, so that your peace. Oh my God, today. Oh, so that your peace that passes all understanding. So that your peace, oh God. That comes in the form of our hugs and our love. Your peace, Lord God, that comes in the form of our acceptance of them. Your peace, oh God, that comes in the form of our talking to them and reaching out to them and just seeing them, oh God, that your peace will give them life. And life more abundantly. Oh, you Joseph, we love you. We need you, Joseph. You have a purpose. You, Joseph. I know right now it's tough and hard, but please don't give up. In the moment, allow your angel, allow a practitioner of peace to talk you through some things, to support you through some things, to engage you and to keep you. Hallelujah, you, Joseph. Be willing to use the resources provided to you, oh Joseph. Hallelujah. To make it through this temporary situation. This temporary situation and dilemma in your life. And I promise you that if you hold on and you hold out, God will restore to you everything you thought you lost. Every situation, even in your mind, if you use the resources and the medicine and the people and the, and, and, and the counselors, everything will be given back to you in due time and in due season. Hallelujah to you, Josephs. Hold on. To you, practitioners of peace, seek out and engage. And may we all continue to love one another. In this season. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, for this is true. 
Allow your spirit to govern us in every way imaginable. Hallelujah. Here's in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, in the many names, I pray, hallelujah, that you are known in the earth. Amen. I say and thank you, Jesus. I need somebody to lift up a sound. So for the Josephs, if you can just take a second and lift up a sound and intercede for a Joseph this morning, you may not know the name. Oh, but I believe in the seed and there are more Josephs. And we need, oh God, hallelujah. Those of us who know we've been called to be peace practitioners, we need a to remember them and lift them up. Hallelujah. In this moment, if I can get a two or three, if I can get five or six where you are to say, God bless the Josephs. Uh, be with the Josephs. Cover the Josephs, Lord God, uh, until they come across a peace practitioner. They can shift their atmosphere and change their life. Hallelujah. I thank God for the Josephs. Uh, and I thank God for you, people of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you are Joseph listening this morning, put your name in the comment. Reach out to us on Facebook. Reach out to me at Reverend Venice. Uh, Venice, folks at mccbaltimore.org. Y'all put our emails in the comment section right now so they know how to contact us and get a hold of us so, so that we can be the peace ambassadors God has calling us to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone do that for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now. Hallelujah. And if you're interested in a church home, we are we are open and we are affirming of all people. Hallelujah. I am your pastor. Hallelujah. You have met Minister Tomas. He would be one of several of your ministers. Reach out to us and we will accept you with open arms. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we thank God for you wherever you are as an ally and a friend. And we thank you, hallelujah, for joining us this morning. Glory be to God. If you can prepare your hearts and your minds for communion, hallelujah, it would mean so much to me. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, MCC Baltimore. Let us go into communion. Amen. We thank God for an opportunity to do communion with you on today. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he gathered in an upper room for a feast. Taking the bread from the table, he blessed it. And then broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, remember me. After the meal, he took the cup, blessed it, passed it around to all those gathered saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my life, which is poured out for you and for many. As often as you drink of it, you remember the sacrifice that was made for you. Please pray with us. Gracious God, our creator, we invite you to pour out your spirit on us 
on these gifts of fruit and grain. As we are partaking of this meal, bless these elements that we share. May they embody the presence, the living presence of Christ, that we might become your healing presence, feeding a hungry world in the name of all that is holy, righteous, just, and pure. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again, amen. Amen. And although, um, family, we are not together in person, we are together in spirit. And so because of this, we can share in the life and covenant of Christ collectively at the open table, no matter who you are and where you are. This is a calling for everyone to partake with us in community. So please take the bread or cracker or chip, whatever you have in your home and partake of it with us, knowing that this is the promise of a new life in God. Amen. Now take your juice or your water whatever it is that you have in your home to represent fluid of some form, amen. Knowing that this is the promise of a new covenant in God. Amen. Glory be to God. I want to thank each of you for joining us for our Sunday worship encounter. I'm getting myself together. Amen. And this is my prayer for you. May the God of your understanding keep you, protect you, and guide you as you come to embrace the fullness of who you are as you are in the earth. May you bear the fruit of freedom, love, and compassion and peace in this season. And may our Lord shine her face upon you and extend unmeasurable grace to you and your family as you continue to endure in love. And may the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge fill your inner being. And may we say this part together, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in the name of Jesus, the name of God, and the many names of God we pray. Amen. Amen. And Ashe, God bless you, people of God. Thank you again for joining us. We love you. Have a blessed week. Yeah.